Hello everybody and welcome to Warlords of, and I'm going to try and pronounce this, Sigurfridia. I don't know if that's correct. Bloody Norse words and their G's and their R's confusing me. Episode 1 anime review, which will probably be quite lengthy, as if the episode itself was quite lengthy. It was one of them double length spectacular episodes. Uh, what this show is, if you were not about, it's about planes and stuff, and that's all the explanation you're gonna get. No, I guess they fight sort of like, they're like aliens, kinda, but not really, and, uh, it's by the, okay, well, I'll be honest with you, the same, I watched, I watched this for the same reason I'm sure a lot of people watched it, because the guy who wrote ReZero did it. That, that's, you know, I'll be lying if I said that wasn't my primary, uh, reason for watching it. Uh, that fact alone, though, did play into this first episode kind of well. Like, there's nothing in the show itself that would put you on edge, but that fact that you know this dude wrote ReZero and you know what that's about, played into it, which we'll get to probably in like 70 years when I talk about it. Um, so anyway, let's get into the episode and talk about how exactly everything went down. Again, this is likely going to be fairly lengthy, so I'm not going to go too deep on all the details, uh, you know, obviously I'll talk about stuff as I get to it, but I'm probably not going to go explain everything, like, oh, they moved their arm this way. No, that's not how this is going to go. But anyway, let's do this. So we start right into the action. There's a battle in Alaska, I think it was. There's a missile launched. There's a giant skeleton snake monster, which is just there. It's protecting this large tower thing that we later learn. It's called a pillar, and that's sort of the important thing, launching out all these monsters. Uh, there's an air force attacking it, you know, as you do. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, eventually, they launch the nuke at it. The snake blocks the nuke, which is less than good for the humans and everything. And then, of course, after the tower was still in one piece after the snake, blocked the nuke, just blocked it casually, just like, what, blocked the nuke, as you do. Uh, all the planes get wiped out, so that's not good. Fair to say that's not good for the, for the soldiers. The aliens win round one. There's like a government meeting, like a UN meeting or whatever it is, basically talking about how, okay, we suck. We couldn't take out the pill with a nuke. We're kind of boned, basically. Uh, Europe, Europe especially... They're like, yeah, we've lost most of Europe, we're probably going to lose all of Europe and Asia are like, well, don't send all your refugees over here, because we ain't got the space and all that. Um, nothing they can do to fight back, so they're all pretty, like, not accepting of defeat, but they don't really know what to do. And then out of nowhere, some kid with an eye patch just appears, uh, and this kid with an eye patch, he's, he's a god, apparently. Not just any god, he's Odin, you know, Norse king god, Odin, Thor's dad and that, you know, you've seen... The bloody Avengers, you know who Odin is. Uh, yeah, Odin says, well, yeah, yeah, I'll help you boys out, I'll give you the means to fight. That's my daughter, she's called Valkyrie, and then I guess they used her power or something. They don't really explain exactly how it went down, but somehow, presumably, they got Valkyrie's power to the humans, and that's why, like, you got the special pilots later on that, you know, have the power to fight, and they turn their planes to have angel wings, which we'll, we'll get to in just a little bit. Uh... Valkyrie was going to save humanity, what else did he say, Ragnarok is nigh, and it's like, yeah, I've seen Thor, I know, I know how this works, they're going to go to that planet with that dude on it, and uh, the Incredible Hulk's going to be there, it's going to be crazy, uh, my Norse knowledge is not very good, if you couldn't tell, I haven't even played the new God of War, that's how, that's how not good my knowledge is, I guess then we forward a little bit in time, because to another fight with the planes and everything, another pillar, there's dog fighting as you do, battles through the skies, pretty impressive, uh, then the blonde girl shows up, who I first I thought was Valkyrie, his straight up his daughter, but now it seems like it's actually, well it's not, it's Claudia, or Claudia, I'm gonna go with Claudia, um, our main heroine, I guess, and she's like the super, she's got like an old plane, everyone else got like fighter jets, and she's got like an old World War II style, you know, propeller plane, little dinky machine guns as you do, but it's way better, she takes command, and is able to organise things, they're doing quite well. The pillar then starts f hurling swords at it at them, and it's like, okay, Gilgamesh, calm down. It also has a million shields as well. She, her plane grows wings, then, and she has a magic missile, not like that, uh, and just goes through all the shields to destroy the pillar, which then turns into a tree. Um, 
saying it all out loud makes it sound really stupid, but it all makes sense, I promise. It's sort of like, presumably it's like uh, Yggdrasil, the world tree. I know that one uh, from the Norse mythology. It's probably something to do with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, pillar turned into a tree. Everyone else is dead, though. She was the only survivor of all those other planes got shot down, which is weird because before she destroyed the pillar, they all looked to be in all right con condition. I assume maybe the explosion just decimated everyone except her because she has magic protection powers, I guess. Or she's just a bad luck charm. Either or. They destroyed the pillar, though. That's the important thing to know. That's, I call that a win. It wasn't a win. Too many people died. But you get what? It's a partial win. Pyrrhic victory and all that. After that whole mission, she's getting reassigned to Japan. Not because she did anything wrong, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but because Japan's names, they're called a named, which I assume is just the best of the best, uh, theirs got killed. Uh, KIA, killed in action, which is less than good, so she's been sent to replace them. However, because she calls herself a Grim Reaper, because every time she goes on a mission, everyone except her dies. Uh, so that's not good. So what she thinks, she thinks basically she's being sent away to get, get, get her, you know, get her away because she's too dangerous to be on their team, basically. Because she keeps, uh, she keeps getting everyone killed, even though it's, you know, probably a coincidence? We'll go with probably a coincidence. She gets the best of luck wished to her by the commanding officer, I guess. So, uh, off you go. Please don't, please don't be sad. You're not, re you're not bad. You're good. All those people dying, you know, it's not, it's not your fault, Claudia. It's not your fault. On the plane ride there, she's sort of worried that she's going to be treated weird again, which is not good. First impressions, they are important. These dudes are like staring at her through the window like, whoa, look, look at that. But then when she makes eye contact, they like hide. Because like, whoa, no, we're not doing anything, you know. Um, enemy attack out of nowhere from the sea. It's like a jellyfish monster type thing. She goes to deal with it. But then some other planes show up to help her. There's like a pink sea plane there's like a red plane and there's another color plane i can't remember what color it was was it yellow i think it was yellow i can't remember uh, there's you know there's a lot of them they all have fights none of their planes are proper war you know proper valkyrie squad standard issue they're just probably what they could just scrounge up i would guess uh she takes command does claudia they have an endurance battle we they're like all right we just got to hold out for this amount of time this thing will blow up because it's not connected to the thing they have their big old fight. Uh, it's pretty good. We get introduced to these three new characters who I'm sure we'll never see again after this. Jokes, I know we do. Uh, the thing met with earlier than expected. Their timing was slightly off, which I guess was a nice twist on it. Usually it's like, okay, exactly to the letter. But no, it was nice to see. That's not how that would work. Of course, you're only making a prediction. Of course, sometimes you're off. Um, after that, they all bid Claudia farewell after their big old, big old fight. Uh, and then they're like, w may we meet again one day in the distant future? And then when she lands on the base, they, they are also at that base. And they're like, oh, nice to see you again, basically. We all thought that, we all saw that coming, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I'm just going to, even if you didn't, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. We all saw that coming. Claudia introduces herself to the commander of the base, all formal-like. And meanwhile, he's putting his socks on. He's not been wearing socks. He's got very hairy legs. I can relate to that. I'm not going to get my legs on stream. Stream? We'll go with that on camera. Because first off, I'm not that athletic. And second off, no one wants to see that. Um, he says, hey, you're welcome, Pa. You'll be after the alerts listed. The the black-haired girl called Miyako, uh, or Miko, whatever you want to call her. I'll go probably switch between, as I often do. Is going to be showing her around because rock, paper, scissors. She nicknames her Claudie because, because you know, she's... She's one of them, she, you know, she's one of them characters, the ones that give nicknames to everyone. They go see the hangar, the mechanics all think she's cute, and then the head mechanic is like a old, a strict old grumpy man, but he's like, also like, he does it for, because he loves you really. That's another thing there. Next is the cafeteria. You can't go in the cafeteria because there's an alert on, because you don't want to be eating when you could get attacked by aliens, sort of. Uh, the pink haired one, called Sonica. She shows up to say hello, basically, and then they all go to the field cafeteria, which is just going on, and they have some food. Everything's very relaxed. There's kids playing footy over there. Uh, it's, you know, you wouldn't think they're under under attack. Well, they're not technically under attack. On alert, basically, on standby. But they are. But everyone's super chill. Uh, Azu, the, the third of the pilots she met earlier, is getting what I can only call being assaulted by some children. Uh, so, Miko, Miko goes to save her, make the save, uh, otherwise Azu may 
not survive into the next episode. Azu introduces herself to Claudia in the most... She just acts, starts acting like a Sundare for some reason. Basically because she doesn't want to lose her position as the captain, commander, the leader of the, the pilot wings. Pilot wings, that's not what they're called. That's a Nintendo game. An old Nintendo game too. Um, so yeah, tries to assert dominance before she gets smacked in the face with a football. It might not be in the face, but that's good enough. Or a soccer ball if you're American. Uh, that was a bad accent. Apologies, I'll let you do a bad English accent in response. There you go. Um, she's got no athleticism, does Azu. She can't even kick the footy ball over, which is... I mean, I'm not going to say that I basically did what she's done before, but I've totally done what she's done before. And it's, you know, I get the embarrassment, I get it. Uh, Claudia says, you know what, this base is really strange. And everyone watching is like, yeah, this base is really strange, but it's fun and awesome. The others do agree, but they're like, yeah, I like it though, it's cool. And yeah, basically, they don't get why Claudia, being this super powerful, she's, you know, one of only, was it, nine elite named, why she come to this base, basically. She knows, she tells them, I'm a Grim Reaper, you know, I'm, I'm bad like that. Turns out, it seems all the troublemakers are at this base, because the captain is, like, going through all their files, and is like, this one's this thing, this one's this thing, this one's this thing. Basically, it's where they want to send people they don't want they don't want, basically. It's basically the place where they send the rejects, it turns out. Uh, which makes them more tightly knit, I'm going to assume. Radar Tower, there's three girls there too. I'm sure we'll get introduced to them properly at some point. They get a beep basically saying, Oh no, we're under attack, let's go deal with that. It, even though it's all relaxed, immediately at the alarm, everyone's like, Alright, we know where to go to the to the evacuation center. Good luck, everyone. Have fun. Uh, have fun. Do good. Come back alive in your pilot ships. Yeah, go do that. Everybody heads to their planes and takes off into the grand battle. Um, a bunch of jellyfish. A lot, it's more like the one from earlier, but there's a lot of them this time. They have a big old fight. Something is odd with them, though. What is it that's odd with them? Well, stalling won't work because they're regenerating somehow. However, they're not supposed to be able to regenerate in the water. They've got to be touching the ground. I'm just thinking, like, there's ground under the water. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy, but... There is ground under the water. I guess it's got to be solid ground. Who knows? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pick too many holes about that. The enemy is under the water. Is the key thing here. It's being all sneaky, sneaky. Uh, it's not brought the ground with it. Like what's her name? Was it Miko that said that? Probably. She's the thick one. Uh, but no, it's just hiding under the water. Which you know, how are you gonna deal with that? You don't have a. They need submarine planes. That's what they need. That would definitely help them out. That's for sure. The crew begins planning. What they've got to do, they've got to sever the link to the ground of the, of the, you know, the enemy, the pillar. The pillar, it's linked to the ground, which lets it regenerate. They've got to sever the link to destroy it for good. Uh, this one, though, turns out it's, obviously, it's under the water. So it's connected to the ground, under the water. You can't let it get onto the land because it's a coastal town, a port town. Too much damage, right? Makes a lot of sense. Go fishing is the uh, idea they came up with. Not exactly, but what they're going to do is they're going to treat it like a fish. I don't know what that is. They said Miko was a big part of the plan. I thought she was going to be the bait, quite frankly, to get the fish, the fish, the fish out of the water. That's not exactly how it went down. All the dudes want to impress her. All the, you know, um, uh, regular plain dudes, I guess we'll call them, want to impress Claudia because she's mighty fine, as you do. Um... Claudia is worried about fighting together because Grim Reaper and all that, and Azu just gets the on the intercom and is like, alright everyone, she thinks she's a Grim Reaper and she's going to get us all killed, so what are your responses to that? And everyone's like, oh, whatever, you know, they're not, uh, they're not really bothered, to put it quite frankly. Like, you think they're probably a little concerned, but they're like, hey, whatever, we don't trust each other, we're all going to die, so we need to trust each other, and that's kind of where we're at with that. Miko can tell she's happy and is like, I'm happy that you are happy, and it's like, Miko, you're a treasure, it'd be a shame if anything happened to you. Uh, something, something's definitely going to happen to her, isn't it? So this is the part where I said that the fact that this is written by the author of ReZero really comes into play. So, I, I guess for people that aren't aware, uh, ReZero, a lot of death in that, and a lot of suffering, and considering it's the first author, the same author, sorry, uh, you think that uh, it's probably going to be similar, you know? It can't escape your mind. It's like, are they going to kill everyone? Are they going to kill some people? Like, that's the part that made this part super tense for me, the big battle. Um, Claudia is put in charge of everything. They begin dynamite fishing to get the thing up. Main body shows up. It's a giant white, I'm sorry, gold whale. Uh, and 
it's got like a little thing in it. Miko needs to rearm her cannons because she took too many, so she heads out. Then we learn everyone else is sort of a little bit insane as well. Azu has got weird equipment on her plane because she just modifies it whenever and it's got like a million missiles she shoots out of it. Uh, Sono, Sonoka is insane and there's this mental dive that almost crashes her plane just to get it to attack itself, which is a bold strategy, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, Azu tells everyone of Intercom, oh that's the earlier bit, sorry my notes, I got confused. They, uh, they team up because they're like, okay, we've got final hit, we've got to get this through. We've got to get through all the jellyfish to get to the core, basically. They all team up and like one after another, switching in and out to shoot through the thing, basically. They get through all the mobs. Azu shoots some rockets at it. Did she get it? Does she bollocks? So, so then, in a, a boneheaded decision, quite honestly, she jumps out of the plane from a very high height with a sword. Probably should have mentioned she picked up a sword earlier, a katana, and slashes the core with a sword. First off, she would have broken so many legs. <laughs> um, let's just let's just be honest here. And uh, yeah, this whole section, like when she did that, I was like, they're gonna kill her. Miko's dead. That's that's the end of it, you know. Just because it was the author of ReZero, you can't escape that the connection your brain just automatically makes. Like they might kill some people here, and I'm still not convinced they won't kill some people. Everything seems a little bit too um, too happy at the moment, I guess. And uh, maybe that's just me trying to find a link where there is none. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried, in, in a way. I'm a little bit worried. But th who survived this time, though? They destroyed the core, there's a big bright light. What could happen? Claudia is all worried again that she's the only survivor. As she likes to do, she has done this quite a lot, I think you'll agree. However, though, every she's like, anyone on the comms, please, someone. Miyako's alive after she screamed her name. She's like, yeah, I'm fine. And so are the other two. I think all the other dudes were alive as well. They chime in on the comms probably. So everyone survived. That's good. That's very good. That's a better record than she's had previously. So that is that is good. The dude says, good job. The commander's like, good job on your first mission. Don't know why I made him sound like that. But it, it works, I guess. Um, they all head back to ground. Every There's cheers by everyone. Everything's happy. There's high fives. Miyako really likes high fiving some dudes. Um, she is like staring into the sunset as she does. Oh, Claudia! And then she turns around. They're all standing there, like, "Welcome to the base." I don't remember what the base was called, but welcome to the base. And that was the end of episode one. I went through it quite quick because it was double length. Uh, usually, I'll take my time a little bit more, but I didn't want this to be 40 minutes long because uh, I don't have that kind of time, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed this, you know, I don't know what I was expecting when I, I mean, I, I do know I was expecting suffering. And that's not quite what we got, but I like the the terms, I like they used like the, the special wings, glimmer, what were the wings called? I've forgotten, I'm bad at this. Um, but yeah, they had everything had its special term, the named, you know, it has its own law, I guess, and it's quite interesting. Curious to see how everything exactly panned out, because like, we don't know how... Odin gave them the powers, or indeed what the powers really are, other than her plane got wings at one point. That was pretty weird. That probably is something to do with it. Um, this it seems like they're on the base of misfits, basically. This is where all the the outcasts, I guess, get sent. So it's pretty interesting. We're gonna see what what uh, happens. I'm I'm curious. I think this is gonna take a more I don't want to call it slice of life, but I think it's going to be more episode of the week type thing, where it's like, there will be an overarching plot, maybe towards the end everything will come together, but I think every episode or so we'll get like, here's this week's invading attacker, and you know, it'll somehow relate to one of the crew members or something. Uh, could be could be completely wrong, could be heavily story driven, one concrete narrative from the beginning, but who knows, I most certainly do not. But here's a question. What was my favourite part of this week's episode? Yes, we nailed that question in. What was it? That's that's a good question. Let's see. So my favourite part is almost something that the show didn't really do itself. It's the the fact that during that final battle, how tense I was. How ba that battle made me tense because I was thinking that people were going to die. You know, I was like, they might kill these characters quite quick. Because because just of the connection that, you know, the the writer is ReZero. Uh... Just because of that inherent connection, I was like, okay, something bad's going to happen. So it did actually add a little bit of doubt as to whether everyone was going to survive or not. Like, it, it was never too in question. 
I'm not going to say like, oh, it's the biggest mystery of the century, but I was a bit like, are they alive? You know, it, it could have gone either way and I wouldn't have been surprised. Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, whether that was intentional or not, I thought it was a good thing as a, as a thing. I'm going to say it was intentional because they would have been aware of the connection that I made in my head and they would have used that to their advantage. I'm not going to fall for it again though. Like you got the one, but now I'm expecting no one to die. So now when people do start dropping, it's going to hit me. It's going to hit me right in the chest and also the brain and also every other part of my body. That indeed. I enjoyed this first episode. It was pretty good. Um, I want to know what the hell Funimation is doing because I have like three or four shows today on Funimation and this is the only one that came out on time. So what's the crack with that? You know, uh, Funimation, sort your crap. I hate using Funimation's website. I'm just going to, not even the website, just their service is not very good. Sort your stuff out. I don't, I don't want to be that guy, but sort it out because sort it out. But the show itself is good. Uh, it'll be easier to watch, obviously, when not every episode is an hour long. Uh, it, it, it is fine. I like it. It makes it feel big and epic. God, it hurts my vo vo vocal cords to talk about. And obviously, it takes longer to watch, takes longer to get out for, you know, the review, obviously. And I like getting stuff to you stuff, getting stuff to you people as fast as possible. But anyway, let's wrap this up now. Thank you, everybody, for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and stuff. For more reviews, that would help me out a lot. I will see you next week for another episode of this. Take care, and bye, guys.